There are two main categories of earthquake waves or seismic waves. These categories are body waves and surface waves. Body waves include P or primary waves and S or secondary waves. Surface waves include Raleigh and love waves, but these will not be discussed in any more detail here. Body waves or P and S waves are classified as a body wave because they travel through the body of the earth, whereas surface waves travel just through the surface. P waves or primary waves are the waves that are first detected at a location. And this is because primary waves travel faster than S or secondary waves. Primary waves are classified as a longitudinal wave, which means that the displacement of the medium, or in this case the earth, is displaced in the same direction as the wave is traveling. Longitudinal waves are also known as compressional waves. Longitudinal waves are unique in that they can travel through both liquids and solids. And primary waves in particular have a speed that is almost double that of secondary waves. And they travel at a velocity of 1,450 meters per second in water and about 5,000 meters per second in granite. So we can see that they travel faster through solid materials than they do through liquid materials. S waves or secondary waves are the second waves that leave an earthquake and they travel much slower than primary waves. S waves are classified as a transverse wave. This means that the displacement of the medium, or in this case the body of the earth, is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. In the case of S waves, this can be up and down or side to side as the wave travels forward. Just as P waves are classified as a compressional wave, S waves are classified as a shear wave. S waves are unique in that they can only travel through solids. S waves or secondary waves cannot travel through liquids. The speed of S waves is typically 60% of that of a P wave in the same medium or material. While earthquakes and seismic waves are dangerous, they are critical in the development of our understanding of the layers of the Earth. P and S waves are the primary tool that scientists use to understand what the properties are of each of the layers of the Earth. Because P and S waves travel differently through liquids and solids, we can use the waves from earthquakes to be able to understand what the layers of the Earth are and what their mechanical properties are. When earthquakes happen, scientists can use the time it takes for P and S waves to reach other locations around the Earth to estimate the properties of the Earth between those two locations. The point where the earthquake originated and the point where the earthquake waves are detected. Also, because S waves or secondary waves cannot travel through liquids, scientists are able to determine what the layers of the Earth are made of and how big they are through what are known as shadow zones. These are locations around the Earth where these waves cannot be detected when an earthquake happens. And again, these shadow zones are caused by the properties of P and S waves and of the properties of the layers of the Earth. This process happens in much the same way that scientists or doctors use things such as CT scans or X-rays. So even though the waves created by earthquakes are dangerous, they have been critical in developing our understanding of the interior of the Earth. Remember that this is a place that no human has ever been to. So it is through these earthquake waves that we know what we know about the center of the Earth.